Welcome back to the Plays With Cars YouTube channel and another episode of Project Garage. Uh, so we've made some progress, the box is together, and we've not made some progress. I still have a pile. Uh, basically what's happened is we had weather come through again, snow and all that crazy jazz. Um, we had this thing to work on and get ready for the first racing next weekend and annual tech and all that. So I did not get a lot of time to spend out here in the garage. I'm sorry, that's how life goes, and I'm being totally honest with this build vlog series. So hey, that's how projects go sometimes. But at least I didn't take that many steps back. Uh, I basically only added one thing to the garage uh, in all that time, so it's not like there's a mountain of recycling to take care of now or anything like that. So that is all good and gravy, and I did manage to make more progress in the box. I got some help getting the box up here, and oh boy, do I have a story for you. So uh, I'm sure any of you that uh, have ordered one of these boxes and built it can attest. There comes a time where you have to pick this part up, all of this with the drawers and everything, and stick it on this cart piece, which has these four legs sticking up, and try to like get it in there without losing a finger um so my helper and i picked this thing up and got it on there and it like nearly severed a finger it was pretty nuts and uh yeah my helper doesn't ever want to touch the box again in fact she called it the danger box which was hilarious to me so i drew up some artwork and i posted it on the grassroots motorsports forum uh, and a guy by the name of Seth, who goes by uh, Mazda Deuce, um, he sent me one of these. That's right, he made vinyls based on my crappy pencil sketch mere hours after this thing nearly took off my hand. Um, so yeah, it's kind of turned into this whole internet thing that this is the danger box, um, and everybody with their own danger box wanted their own set. So, uh, yeah, if you're on Grassroots Motorsports and you've got a danger box, uh, hit Seth up. I gave him permission to use uh, the artwork. We decided that it would make a killer garage metal band. Um, so, who knows, maybe I'll play Angle Grinder for you guys in one of these. But first things first, we got to get danger box on here because that's just too cool not to do. So, um I don't know if any of you have done vinyl before, but when you have die cut vinyl like this, there's two backings. There's the backing backing, which is this blue part, um, and then the front backing, which is this um, like white uh, flat stuff. First, this is like glossy. Um, but basically, you uh, you peel it off here, kind of carefully, and again, trying to do this kind of on or through a camera can be a little. Intimidating sometimes, but also with this logo, a little bit of uh, a little bit of screw up is probably a good thing. Probably uh, would uh, add to the character. I decided I wanted to do a really um, a really big version of this logo on this thing somewhere, and we decided that I should probably like cut it out of cardboard with a uh, uh, with a box knife or something like that to really give it the correct look. Okay, you see we did that. We got that off. So this is the glossy part, this is the backing, this is gone now. And now what we're left with is still that front piece, and then all of the die cut vinyl is on the back. So now we're going to find a good spot on here. And I think right there is about perfect. You definitely don't want to overthink this one. <laughs> okay, so obviously if we were doing on vinyl on a car or something like that, we'd clean it and prep it and all that stuff. This box is brand new. It hasn't had any oil on or anything on it yet, so I didn't have to worry about that. Um, also, heat is your friend. You want it to be a little warmer than it is now. We are actually in a winter storm advisory at the moment, and it is literally snowing outside because, of course, it is. Um, but that's where you get to. Now, little trick on these. When you're doing vinyl, you need to spread it down nice and flat. You want to start in the middle and go to the outward. Um, good old-fashioned credit card, which I will make sure I cover up my numbers. Not that it will do you any good because I don't have anything. Um, you start in the middle and you work your way down using pressure all the way across the card. And that is going to ensure that all of the corners of that vinyl are matted down where they're supposed to be. Uh, and then you got to take this front backing paper off. And you want to be careful because especially like 
areas in here where there's the little lightning bolts, those can all get caught on the paper and try to peel up with it. Um, and that can kind of like, you know, ruin your decal surface. And again, I've got multiples of these and I'm doing it on camera, so I'm not being as careful as I probably should be, but let's see what happens here. Oh yeah, there's the danger box. <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, huge shout out to Seth. Dude, this rocks. Thank you so much for making those and sending them out to me. That is absolutely awesome. I'm totally going to have to start a garage band now and like put that on a bass drum. That is ridiculously cool. All right, so obviously stickers are the most important part of a box. We talked about that in the first one. I have another one for this. Uh, same forum has uh, the world's best band that you've never heard of, which is Interstellar Sledgehammer. I got a sticker from them too. This one's a regular sticker. We're going to go ahead and throw this thing on here. Uh, it deserves a place of honor right here on the inside of the lid. So I'm going to throw that on real quick. Since we're already out here playing with decals. We'll get a cool looking perspective on that. Now Interstellar Sledgehammer, unlike Danger Box, is an actual band with actual music. And we are actually awaiting their uh, debut stuff. There we go. Interstellar Sledgehammer sticker. So yeah. So we've got uh, quite a few uh, car forum meme <laughs> decals going on. Old danger box here. But, but that's, uh, that's going to be its life. We're going to use this thing like crazy and sticker it up. Um, I've got a saying which is cars come and go, but a toolbox is forever. Um, everybody in my family or gearheads, they all have cars, have had cars. Um, come and go and things like that and uh like my dad has had the car that he's had since he was 15 but he's also had the toolbox since he's had since he got his first toolbox and his toolbox has amazing stickers on it um and so does my grandpa and, and my uncle and my sisters and yeah so you know decorate your toolbox just that's the way to go um yeah, so that's what we've got. <laughs> it's just some silly decaling going on. Uh, but we did use some stuff. I've got some more tools into the boxes, um, getting some organization done. I had to do some work on the Mazda. I'm sure you guys have seen that video if you follow any of my other stuff. I also had to do some work to the Porsche. So we were actually kind of just using the garage a little bit too much to really work on it. But I do hope to spend some more time out here uh, this week and next month uh, getting stuff more organized. But... I'm starting to get there a little bit. I'd like to maybe find some better organizers for this kind of stuff instead of just kind of randomly having them in there. I mean, I'm, I know I'm not always going to need a 1 and 1 16th inch wrench for anything. Um, so I'd like to kind of figure out, like, the tools I don't use so much in this box, maybe. And then the stuff I use all the time in this. Like, I want to have a drawer of nothing but 10 millimeter sockets, I swear. Um, so that this is the one that's got all the the stuff in it because this is the one that you're gonna it's mobile right like i'm gonna tow this thing out from under there out to where i'm at in the garage or if i'm out in the driveway working on the bronco or something like i want to be able to have the most common stuff with me and then if i need something really you know bizarre i can come in here and and grab the new box and, and do that and, and you can see i've started to kind of like I don't know where these are going yet, but I know they're going in the box. Like the rubber mallet just isn't something I need all that often. So like, you know, it should go in here. Um, this set actually needs to go in here. I don't know if you guys have seen this. Gear Inch made these. It's a pass-through socket set. So that means there's a hole in the middle of all the sockets and in the middle of the extensions and in the actual ratchet. And so the ratchet attaches on the outside like that. It's really awesome if you're working on anything that's got all thread or like Ford especially and like when they were really tied in with Mazda. Um, they love to use nuts and bolts that have studs on the top of the, the stupid bolt heads too and then they can put something else on top of it. And so you end up with these really long, especially like on coils and valve covers, really, really long things. And you like, you can't get a ratcheting wrench in there because they're, they're too thick around. This is like much thinner wall, so you can get down into those little holes, and then you have this great big giant uh, long extension that can get down there. I really love the heck out of this set. Um, I got this at Napa 
they had them about a million years ago, probably five, six years ago. But they had this set, and then they had this is like the quarter inch drive um, version, and then they have like a three inch drive version too, which I also have, but I don't see sitting around anywhere. Um, but this set especially has been like super, super useful on the road because it's got so many things and so many uses being that it's a pass-through like that. And then like the the ratchet head is a swiveling doot, doot, doot one with a lock on it, which is super nice and it's reversible. So yeah, uh, if you see one of these sets, like I heartily recommend picking it up. They are ridiculously useful. And again, um, I have no, <laughs> no paid... Um, product or anything like that on this channel if i'm recommending something it's because i spent my own money on it and i just think it's cool gear wrench doesn't give me anything harbor freight doesn't give me anything i get nothing from nobody this channel's not monetized this is strictly for fun um but i've had this set for like five plus years and i love the heck out of it um so yeah if you i don't know if the part number is on it or anything no there's not one on the blow case but yeah if if you see these gear wrench pass-through sockets anywhere Pick them up, man. They are super awesome. And Gear Inch does have a lifetime warranty, FYI. Anybody that sells Gear Inch will replace, uh, like, old school craftsman style. They'll replace it free of charge, like, no questions asked. Um, my local Napa does, uh, they've got, like, a really big tool section. I know not all of them do. Um, but they carry all the Gear Inch stuff. And I've had, I wouldn't say quite a few, I think maybe two or three wrenches total. Um, and I've had Gear Inch for probably I don't know, 15 years? When did they come out? I got them pretty much as soon as they came out. Um, but yeah, I've only had like two or three fail, and they've always just been replaced, no questions asked, with the exact same thing. They're they're really fantastic. But yeah, yeah uh, if you find these, I recommend that. But yeah, that is going to go in Ninja Box. I use that all the time. Um, in fact, let me show you up here. I've got a whole bunch of gear and stuff. Like these are the, you know, with the swivel heads which are nice. The only thing I don't like about these is they don't have the little reversing tab on them like this does. And so I've actually got myself caught before where I've been gear wrenching something and then the wrench got caught and there was no way to like click the thing and back back out. And I ended up having to like get the Dremel out and cut something off to get there. So I tend not to use these, the swivel headed ones so much because they lack that reverser. My regular set has the reversers on them, but you know, I'm sure I got them on some deal or something, like I said, from a Napa or an O'Reilly's or something like that. Um, you know, but so these will probably end up going in that box, uh, for example. So, yeah, I'm just I'm trying to go through my tools and trying to sort everything out. It's, it's been a slow process and I apologize for it. But, you know, what? like I said, this is it's an honest garage build vlog. Um, we've all got day to day lives. We've all got things going on. We've all got, you know stuff happening and it's just about keeping that momentum up with uh trying to get work done every day or at least every week um i try to do something like for the channel every day which means a lot of times is either working on a car or working on a miniatures monday or something like that um so it's not always car stuff not always in the garage but i definitely have been trying to do time in the garage and i've been trying to to keep it clean and keep it from getting worse at least but um, yeah, as the weather gets nicer, as things flush out here, I do want to spend more time in here and I want to finish getting this going, but I wanted to give you guys an update that the box got up here. It didn't take any fingers. I've got all 10 still, uh, despite its best efforts. So yeah, danger box, danger box lives. You can see I'm still not done yet. I gotta, I gotta actually bolt the stupid thing down, um, and put the handle on, uh, and then I'll be done with this one and I can fill this up with tools put all my common stuff in here so I can put all my uncommon stuff in the other box and go from there. So until the next time, uh, that's been our garage update.